Sim racing. We love it. Mix up our hobbies, our way of escaping reality, and for some of us, our dreams. But what's the story behind it all? Checkered Flag, 1994. Made in 1994, this game was a sort of remake of another game released a few years prior. It was developed by Rebellion Developments and published by the Atari Corporation for the Atari Jaguar. Checkered Flag took more of a simulation approach than the original game along with some updated graphics. Although many semi-realistic racing games have been made before this, it is considered to be the first pure sim racer in history by many. Moving on to yet another first, the original wheel and pedal set was the Thrustmaster Formula T1. This early sim racing piece of equipment is the first wheel and pedals to be released to the open market. It had no such thing as force feedback, featured 270 degrees of rotation with a basic shifter and a pedal set. It is still one of the most popular sim racing wheels in all of sim racing history, but you likely won't be finding anyone using it today. Microsoft Sidewinder Wrist Feedback Wheel Just three years after the release of the Thrustmaster T1, there was a new kit on the block, the Microsoft Sidewinder. This was the first wheel to include Force Feedback, which is a feature that nearly all wheels have today and it was more of a, an immersive feature or gimmick rather than something that would actually help you drive, but of course this did set the basis for the amazing feature that we know and love today. This wheel was so well built that some people to this day still use it for highly low budget simulator setups. Gran Turismo, the original game. I really don't think I need to introduce the Gran Turismo series as any human with an at least comprehensive knowledge of game history should know just the game I'm speaking of. The first Gran Turismo game has a history I could ramble on about for ages and could make an entire two and a half hour video for. The game had a development process of five years to complete by mainly a seven person team led by the all famous Kazunori Yamashui. I am sorry if I had not pronounced that right. Gran Turismo was a game created from sheer passion, made to unite the car community through a game. People could buy and customize the car of their dreams, race them, experience a very well created career mode with for its decade a very realistic physics model. Both the car community and the sim racing community were vastly boosted in size and changed dramatically. Both communities would likely not be nearly as great as they are today without this game coming out. R Factor Released in 2005, R Factor changed sim racing forever. With physics as good, if not better, than Grand Prix Legends, content that spread throughout all major and some smaller road racing disciplines, and heavy modding support, this is a game that will go down as a hero to many and to almost any sim racing purist. If you were to play this game right now, you would see everything you would expect from a modern sim except for the graphics, which were still quite extraordinary for its time. This was also likely the first consumer racing game that could be used to train real-life drivers. This game set the base for pretty much any modern racing sim, including but not limited to Automobilista 1 and 2, the Project Car series, and of course today's sim racing giants, Theta Corsa, R Factor 2, and iRacing. The rest, ladies and gentlemen, is the present. The reality of sim racing we all know and love. Our passions, our lives, our hobbies, our way of escaping reality, and our glimpses of achieving our ludicrous racing driver dreams. Sim racing is such an amazing and beautiful thing, and its history is no exception.
whatsoever.